Uh, the first speaker of this last session is the Xiaoyun, Dr. Xiaoyun Cho. Uh, he will talk about scalar hair black holes with an asymptotic potential. Please, you have uh, 25 minutes. All right, thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, 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 good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm going to present my talk uh, with the title uh, Scala Harry Black Pulse uh, with an asymmetric uh, potential. Uh, I, have, I have slightly modified the, the, the title. Uh, here's the joint project with uh, Jose Luis, uh, who is from Spain, and uh, Professor uh, Dong, Han, Dong Han Young from the uh, PNU. And now I'm going to talk about the, the background. Uh, I think uh, I think most of us here uh, hear, uh, hear, uh, list, hear about the no hair theorem uh, from the previous talk uh, by Professor uh, Lee Bum Hong and uh, and uh, by Professor uh, Mio Park, I think. And then uh, we all know that the, the black holes are characterized uh, by the mass, the uh, angular momentum, and the electrical charge uh, after the gravitational collapse. It means uh, you won't detect uh, other properties of the black hole other than these uh, three properties. Uh, later, uh, this uh, Noha theorem uh, was challenged by the, the existence of the solitonic solution, uh, uh, which was uh, discovered by uh, Barnick and McKinnon uh, in, the, in the 90s uh, in the einstein young Mills theory, because uh, this has opened uh, the, the construction of the hairy black holes. And, uh, and, and especially uh, the, the construction of the, of the non-abelian uh, SU2 black holes uh, are the counter example for the for the no hair theorem. It means that uh, the no hair theorem uh, will not be obeyed uh, anymore. And uh, here are the examples for the uh, non abelian black, black holes, which are the Einstein Young Mills black holes, uh, Einstein uh, Young Mills Higgs black holes, and then the Einstein uh, Young Mills uh, Dilaton black holes. And these solutions are, are spherically symmetric and uh, they have the non trivial abelian hair uh, outside the horizon. Uh, there are some uh, other counter examples also. Uh, the work done by uh, Boga Kai House and uh, Yuta Kunz. Uh, Yuta Kunz will give a talk uh, in, the, in the last section. And uh, they, gener they generalize uh, the Einstein Young Mills Dilaton black hole from the spherical spher symmetric configuration to the static axially symmetric configuration. Uh, they also uh, generalize uh, the Einstein Young Mills black, black hole from the uh, spherical symmetric configuration to the static axially symmetric uh, configuration. And uh, here are the some uh, scalar hairy black holes, uh, which was uh, discovered by this, uh, uh, which was done by these uh, following authors, for example, by Olaf Lechenfeld and then uh, Bronikov and Anna Ballon. Uh, they minimally couple the Einstein gravity with, uh, with a scalar potential and with a specific scalar potential. Uh, in our case, uh, we consider the Einstein gravity uh, minimally coupled with uh, a, 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 an asymmetric uh, scalar potential. Uh, this is the work. Uh, this was the work done by uh, Nokamedi and Sagado, I think, around twenty years ago. Uh, here, here is the model, and then uh, here's the uh, potential looks uh, anti anti symmetric. Uh, the the model is very simple. Um, you minimally couple the Einstein gravity uh, with a uh, scalar potential. And uh, they constructed the uh, spherically uh, regular and asymptotically flat hairy black holes, but uh, they didn't study the proper properties systematically. It means that uh, they didn't explore the, the full parameter space for phi naught and phi one. And uh, they they only they they calculate the black hole solutions and they compare the, the mass with the Einstein Young Mills uh, black holes uh, for the empirical mass uh, formula. Uh, they also generalize uh, this model to the non-minimally uh, couple case. Now uh, we talk about now, now we'll talk about the properties of the potential. Uh, I think uh, if you listen to the talk by Professor Tyrungan, uh, maybe you uh, you have already seen this uh, potential. Uh, this potential has a local minimum uh, at a, and then uh, final is the local maximum of the potential. Here is the final, uh, which is the local maximum of the potential. Uh, phi one is the global minimum of the potential. So here is the phi one. Phi, phi one is the global minimum uh, of the potential. So the local maximum of the potential and uh, phi naught and phi one, they are related by this uh, relationship. Uh, in, in the cosmology, I think uh, uh, Sidney Coleman, uh, who was the first person to use this 
kind of potential to to describe uh, the universe uh, which is undergoing uh, quantum tunneling from the false vacuum which is given by phi naught a local maximum uh, of the potential to the true vacuum phi one uh, which is the true uh, true vacuum they may, uh, I think I think uh, in the cosmology this potential is used to study the inflation uh, since I'm not the expert on this so uh, maybe you can uh, share your knowledge with me uh, if you know um, Okay, uh, why this uh, potential looks uh, asymmetric because uh, there's a cubic term uh, appear. So it makes the potential looks uh, asymmetric. So if the cubic term disappear, then uh, the potential looks like a Higgs potential with uh, two degenerate uh, minima. In this case, right, we fix the potential A equal to zero so that we can obtain the asymptotically flat uh, black hole solutions. Uh, you can obtain the social idea solution if you fix uh, a not equal to zero here. We fix a equal to zero such that the, the potential uh, equal to zero. Uh, in this case, uh, the since the theory uh, is, is uh, very simple, so when you vary the, the action with respect to the metric, you will get the Einstein equation. Uh, if you vary the action with respect to the scalar field, you will obtain the Klingonian equation. Here, uh, we use the following and uh, which is uh, such a, uh, with a such a like to construct the Harry Black Hole solution. Uh, in this case, uh, the function M is the Misner sharp uh, mass function. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the Black Hole solution, uh, uh, when, uh, when uh, R equal to R, it means that R is the radius of the horizon. Uh, when M and R equal to R, uh, the mass function equal to R over 2. And then at infinity, the Misner shaft function will approach to a constant value. And then the constant value uh, represents the mass of the black hole. Uh, probably you have, uh, in this part, I will explain why such a black hole solution exists. Uh, probably I think uh, you, might, uh, you might have seen this uh, in the previous talk, uh, I think by Professor Lee. Uh, they explain uh, why, why such a solution exists. Uh, now I'm 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 using uh, the, uh, the 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 review paper by uh, Eugene and Carlos. Uh, they uh, in in from this paper uh, we we also uh, we didn't use the Einstein equation uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, to do the analysis. We just only look at the the Klingonian equation. Here, right for the first part, uh, we multiply the scalar field to the Klingonian equation. And then here, this is what we get. And then we integrate this term by parts. And uh, the boundary term uh, will vanish because uh, uh, we, we integrate the boundary term will vanish uh, at the horizon at, 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 at the infinity uh, when you substitute the, 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 the expansion into the, into, the, into the boundary term. So this is what we left. So uh, the, the contraction of this uh, scalar field will be greater or equal to zero because uh, the scalar field is uh, independent of time. So uh, this product will be space-like or uh, it means greater or equal to zero. So in this case, I only, if you want me, if you want to make this, uh, the term in the bracket to be non-trivial, then uh, the product phi with the dvd phi has to be less uh, less than zero. Uh, in our, in, in the numeric, uh, we, we show that the uh, phi is greater than zero. So uh, in this case, uh, dvd phi has to be uh, less than zero. Uh, it means that right, uh, the potential has to be somehow decreased from from a local maximum to a local minimum, something like this. So uh, again, we can multiply the klein golden equation by dvd phi and repeat again the same procedure with the boundary term vanish. We will get the following term in the in the in the in the in the bracket. And uh, obviously, right, uh, this term greater than zero. This term also uh, greater equal to greater or equal to zero. And then in this case, uh, only if you want to make this uh, non-trivial, so this uh, the second derivative of the potential with respect to the phi has to be less than zero. So these two conditions show that the potential must possess uh, at least uh, one uh, local maximum. And then also we can look at the weak energy condition. And uh, this uh, weak energy condition uh, can be violated because uh, the potential possess a global minimum. Uh, because uh, because it has a global minimum, then it means that the potential has some part uh, less than uh, become negative. So the the energy density will, will become uh, negative. Uh, we can also use the viral identity to reach the similar conclusion to show that uh, the potential has to less than zero. 
And uh, in this case, uh, you will substitute your metric answer into the action and then do the analysis. So in, in the summary, right, this uh, potential V uh, must possess, uh, I mean, a global minimum such that uh, the potential less than zero. And then a, a local maximum such that the first uh, condition can be satisfied. And it fix the local maximum uh, to, be, to, be, to be zero to guarantee that the black hole solutions are asymptotically flat. Here, right, uh, we can also repeat the same uh, same procedure for the for the solitonic solutions, which is known as uh, scalaron, and uh, you can change the uh, the lower end of the integration from the horizon uh, to the origin. Here, I will talk about the the numerical procedure. Uh, when you substitute the the metric answer into the Einstein metal field equation, uh, you will get a set of uh, nonlinear ODE, and uh, this. Uh, uh, this set of uh, nonlinear ODE uh, solved by the ODE solver called COSIS. Uh, in this case, uh, COSIS uh, uses a uh, Newton method to solve the boundary wave problem with the adaptive uh, mesh refinement uh, around 1,000 points. And uh, it, it also can provide the estimation of the error for the, for the solutions around 10 to negative 10. And uh, to, to generate the heavy black hole solution, here, uh, we just fixed the uh, uh, several values for the, the global minimum and uh, vary the, the value of the, of the scalar field at the horizon. So uh, the local maximum of the potential uh, will be determined exactly uh, when the boundary conditions are satisfied. Uh, in, so uh, in, in the original paper by Nukamendi and Sagado, they also uh, study the linear stability, but they didn't study the, the spectrum. Okay, they didn't study the spectrum for the parameter space. So in this case, uh, for the for the radial perturbation, we also put up the, the background metric and the scalar field uh, as shown by this. And uh, for the angular part, uh, the angular part uh, remain in, invariant. So here we only put up the GDT and the GR component. Here, right, uh, the, the function FT, FR, and phi1 are, are the small perturbations uh, to the non perturbed solutions. Um, in this case, I, uh, when you substitute the, the metric answer, this metric answer to the Einstein metal field equation, you will also get a set of uh, nonlinear ordinary differential equation. And uh, you can combine them into a single uh, master, a uh, sing, uh, uh, single line master equation. And because uh, not all of them are independent, so you can uh, play around with the algebraic. And uh, you will get the uh, effective potential VR and the tortoise uh, coordinate. And uh, the perturbation uh, is uh, unstable uh, when the omega square is less than zero because uh, the perturbation uh, can grow exponentially with time. So by versa, when omega square greater than zero, so the perturbation is stable because uh, it decays uh, exponentially with time. Uh, this uh, Schrodinger-like master equation is an eigenvalue problem. So uh, the uh, so we we find the mode uh, numerically and then uh, the the value of omega square is found automatically when that satisfies uh, the boundary conditions. Here, uh, I will show some, some result, uh, some new result. Here, right, uh, like I mentioned uh, before, uh, I will show the result for the area of horizon and the Hawking temperature. Uh, in this case, uh, I will fix the several value of the global minimum uh, of, the, of the potential, like 5 equal to 0 0.5, 1.0, 3.0, and then 5.0. So in, so in this case, uh, I will use a slightly definition to define the area of, of horizon. Uh, here, I, I will use the small capital letter H, uh, A H, and the small, small capital letter T uh, with the suffix H, uh, because this uh, reduce uh, area of horizon and the reduce of the Hawking temperature. Uh, the way I define such a way because uh, they can compare to the non-solution. In here, the non-solution is the social black hole. So uh, when the scalar field at the horizon is zero, uh, the social black hole, uh, uh, the, the value of the radius uh, of the area of horizon is one, uh, similar to the, to the Hawking, uh, radius Hawking temperature. So when, when the scalar field at the, at the horizon is zero, uh, there's no scalar field at the horizon. So the, the solution, the trivial solution is the social solution. So when, when we increase the scalar field from the, at the horizon from zero and then approach to the uh, to the to five one, which is the global minimum of the potential, the reduce the the reduced uh, area of the horizon decreases to zero, 
as you can see, for 5.1 equal to 0 0.5 and uh, 1.0. So this indicates that uh, the, the size of the horizon decreases. Uh, so there will be a naked singularity form in this case. Uh, for 5.1 equal to 3.0 and 5.0, uh, the here, right, we expect uh, the, the solution, I mean, I mean the reduce of the reduce uh, area of horizon will approach to uh, 3.0 uh, and 5.0. However, we are unable to extend the solution anymore because uh, COSIS uh, doesn't show the convergence. So we only stop to generate the solution uh, at this point. So we look at the Hawking temperature. <clears throat> when we increase the scalar field at the horizon from zero uh, until uh, until approach to the global uh, global minimum, the Hawking temperature diverts in, in, in that limit for 0 0.5 and 1.0. And uh, for for five one equal to three point zero and five point zero, uh, we are unable to generate the, the solution anymore. But uh, we expect uh, the I mean the the Hawking temperature for these two branches of solution will diverge as well when the uh, value of the scalar field at the horizon uh, approach to the global minimum. So here are the profile of the black hole solutions. Uh, we look at the green line. The green line uh, represent the the mass function of the black hole. So as you can see, uh, 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 we are doing uh, we are doing the the calculation in the compactified coordinate for the for the convenience of the compactified coordinate in such a way uh, you can do the calculation easier. <clears throat> and uh, for the for the mass function for this inner part, the solution uh, behave as a pure ADS. And then uh, when 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 you can see the the mass function uh, approach to uh, when x approach to one, you can see that the mass function uh, approach to a constant, and this uh, represent the, the mass of the black hole. And uh, you can see uh, there's a global minimum uh, for the mass function uh, as as we increase the the value of the scalar field approach to uh, one point zero, uh, the the global minimum will will decrease. And then decrease to to a negative value, and then it becomes steeper and steeper. So maybe this is the reason uh, that makes uh, COSIS doesn't 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 converge because uh, the solution uh, looks uh, not very good. So uh, here I'm going to show the unstable uh, radio modes. Uh, here uh, I I also did the calculation. I mean, obtain the the spectrum for the for the unstable mode for the scalarons scal uh, in the small horizon limit of the black hole. And as you can see, uh, when I increase the, which is represented by the purple line, uh, if I increase the, the value of the scalar field at the, at the origin, uh, the mode will become unstable. The radial mode uh, start from zero, decrease to a minimum value, and then increase again to, to zero. So uh, in this case, uh, when you switch on, when you, Increase the size of the of the horizon uh, from zero, and then to arbitrary last, last value. For example, uh, you can see that uh, there are a, a families of uh, black hole solution emerge from the from the uh, from the scalaron. And then, okay, so we can say that uh, in the small horizon limit, uh, the black hole can reduce to the scal scalaron case. So uh, in this sense, uh, you can see that uh, when the size of the horizon increases. The black hole become relatively more stable to the to the small horizon limit, so small horizon size. So uh, this also uh, happened for five one equal to one point zero. Now I will talk about the the conclusion and the outlook. Uh, the 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 regular heavy black holes exist for the gravity minimally coupled with an uh, asymmetric scalar potential. Uh, the potential condensed uh, uh, global minimum phi one local maximum local minimum a, and uh, and a local maximum phi naught, and uh, we fix the local maximum a equal to zero to to ensure that the the black holes are asymptotically flat. Here, right uh, from the analysis uh, uh, on the on the Pangolin equation, uh, we find that the the potential has to be negative for some region of phi, and then. Uh, with with five one uh, with a global minimum, this can guarantee that the potential is negative, and then the potential must possess uh, at least one uh, local maximum. And we also find that uh, when we shift on the scalar field at the horizon, 
uh, we can generate a family of uh, hairy black hole solutions emerged from the such a black hole. And uh, in the small horizon limit, the hairy black hole reduced to the to the particularized solution, which is known as scalar run. Uh, as you can see just now, the hairy black hole is uh, unstable against the uh, radial perturbation. But uh, the black hole with uh, larger size, uh, with the larger horizon radius, is, re is relatively stable against, uh, if you compare to the uh, small horizon uh, radius. <clears throat> so there are some future works uh, we can consider. Uh, for example, we can consider the, to add the Maxwell field to consider the charged uh, hairy black hole. Uh, although we know uh, that the, uh, the astrophysical uh, black holes uh, doesn't carry, uh, uh, don't carry the uh, electrical charge, but uh, in the theoretical, maybe you can study the properties of such uh, charge uh, hairy black holes. And then uh, since uh, the astrophysical black holes are rotating, so uh, maybe you can generalize uh, this to this case, this uh, circular symmetric case to the rapidly spinning black hole. Because uh, for some uh, hairy black holes, uh, the uh, there are some hairy black holes uh, can exceed the, the kill bound. It means that the rotational parameter A can exceed the value of one. So you can see that whether this uh, black hole solution can exceed the kill bound or not, if you try to generalize to the rapidly spinning case. Uh, the recent discovery of the, the recent imaging of the Sakitar A star, uh, which can which is a very good motivation to study the this uh, the, the shadow of this uh, hairy black hole. You can compare the 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 shadow of this uh, hairy black hole with the such a black hole, and then to see what are the differences. Similarly, also we can study the the ring down phase of the black hole. To, uh, for example, we can uh, use we can uh, calculate the cost the spectrum of the quasi normal of the black hole. So thanks for listening, and thanks for the organizer for this uh, workshop, especially Professor Young for organizing anything uh, everything and. Uh, Thanks for the organizer for providing a nice accommodation. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the nice talk. So question time, any questions? So I have a question. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. I, I want to the previous slide. Oh, this one, okay. Further. Oh, further. Okay, yes. the at the conclusion, the on the bottom line, the your oh. hairy black hole is unstable against the radial perturbation. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, now, what do you mean by the radial perturbation? Uh, this one, this radial perturbation is along the radial uh, direction. That is not the standard perturbation technique, actually. Oh uh, yes, I know. <laughs> Then how to the important thing is that the break if the hairy break is stable, then we can accept it as a real break. But if the break is unstable, then we reject okay that solution. Oh. So okay, therefore, okay. stability of the break is very important mm -hmm. to okay uh, select the uh, true break. But uh, in your analysis, the radial perturbation, I, I I don't believe that that. Polarization technique is, uh, is not the standard technique uh, for the polarization theory. So therefore, you have to, okay, you have to analyze more on the polarization theory. Mm, you mean to consider the scalar perturbation, the axial? Yeah, of course. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Yes, sure, sure, sure. So I mentioned that the, in uh, the ring down phase of the black hole. <laughs> yeah, to study the quasi normal of the, of the black holes. Okay. One more quick question. One more okay, quick. Let me let me ask a question. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. Do you consider the, what kind of the internal structure of such kind of solution? Kind of the in, internal structure you are expected. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, the black hole solutions. Uh, um, how can I say? Uh, we only obtain the solution from the horizon to the to the infinity. So we do not know what is in, uh, what is happening in inside the, the horizon. Mm. But, but this but this interesting. Uh, maybe but, mm. but this interesting. Uh, maybe we can do. Uh, for example, integrate back from the horizon to the to the origin to check what is happening inside. Uh. Maybe this can become the future mm. Mm-hmm. You know, without without the without the scrap field, the geometry 
Nieza a single right here could uh, be like the Kessner universe. Maybe, so maybe. He has a potential of the square fields, clear clash law to, uh, to see the uh, behavior of the matrix near the single space like singularity. Okay, okay. Mm. Mm -mm. Thank you, Nick. Okay. Uh, one more question by you, Professor Yuta Kunz. So she raised the hand. Yeah, um, morning. Yeah, please, uh, please, please. For you, it's uh, afternoon. Uh, hi. Um, hi. Thank you, uh, Sir Yen, for this interesting talk. Hi. And uh, I, I would like to go back to this page 14 of your talk. Um, 14. Okay. 14. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, in here, it seems like you have this completely different uh, behavior when we look yeah. at uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, quantities, uh, area, temperature, or whatever uh, as a function of uh, phi. So either you have this uh, very sharp edge or it, it seems to continue. So it looks like a bit like a phase transition from one phase or one type of behavior to another type of behavior. Uh, can you analyze where precisely this happens? Uh, at uh, what type of values? Or, or can you see something when you make some, uh, let's say, asymptotic expansions? So why this behavior change is occurring? Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't do the do the asymptotic expansion in this situation, but maybe I can go back to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, it might be interesting. One might uh, possibly uh, get some some deeper understanding of uh, where this change is coming uh, from. Yeah, so thanks a lot. Because I thought uh, the the changes may be from here. Because uh, at that uh, limit, uh, this uh, global minimum will become very 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 uh, very very small value, and uh, this will become very steep. So I don't know. Um, maybe I will look uh, deeply on on this part. Okay, so time is up. So please thank speaker again. Uh, who is next speaker? Um, I'm the next one. Okay. How can I read your name, please? Uh, Zhu Hui, Hui Yu. You can call me Hui Yu. Okay. Hui Yu, yeah. Hui, okay. Dr. Hui. Okay, can you please do a screen okay, share? Let me share my screen. Okay, maybe I can stop now. Yeah, yeah, I can see the presentation. Okay. So let so, me start. Yeah, let's start right right now. So okay. next speaker is Dr. Hui. Uh, she will talk about uh, termination of the super radiance from a binary companion. Okay, well, hello everyone. I'm Zhu Hui from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Today, I want to present my work in collaboration with Tong Xi and Professor Wang Yi. And the topic is termination of super radiance from a binary companion. So to start with, I want to firstly introduce what is super radiance and what is gravitational atom. Super radiance or super radiance instability means that a curved black hole can grow a uh, ultralight boson cloud around it because the ergo region of the curved black hole can amplify the incoming wave and the small mass of the boson field can act as a natural mirror to reflect back the outcoming wave to the ergo region and make it amplified again. So at last, there will be a cloud of boson generated by the curved black hole and because of the gravitational effect, it will constrain uh, around the black hole. And the cloud and the black hole itself can be together regarded as a gravitational atom. Here we define the gravitational fine structure constant alpha equals to g mb mu. And mb is black hole mass, mu is the boson mass because we need the small boson mass. So this alpha should be smaller than one. To study this, uh, if, uh, to study the property of gravitational atom, 
we can take the current metric into the clean golden equation here. And by expanding it to the leading order of alpha, we will get a Schrodinger-like equation, uh, just like the hydrogen atom. But actually this, uh, this gravitational atom is different from the hydrogen atom because after we solve that Schrodinger-like equation, although we will also get some uh, eigenstate we, uh, which can be labeled as an LM, but we will get a different energy eigenvalue with some extra imaginary term. And this kind of imaginary term can be finally uh, absorbed into the amplitude mm. of the scalar field. Huh? Sorry? Oh, sorry, no, no, no. Okay. okay. Okay, so this imaginary term can be finally absorbed into the amplitude of the uh, different state. So if gamma NLM is smaller than zero, then it means the state NLM is an absorption state. And it means the cloud will be absorbed into the curved black hole in the rate of gamma NLM. And uh, for the same reason, if gamma is bigger than zero, then it means the cloud, uh, this NLM state is a super radiant state. And the cloud can be generated by the black hole uh, with the rate gamma NLM. And here gamma NLM has been calculated, uh, which is proportional to alpha to the four L plus five. And for the real part of this energy eigenvalue, E and LM it means the energy of different states, just like the hydrogen atom. So we can see there will be a Bohr splitting, fine splitting and hyperfine structure splitting. And also the energy spectrum is uh, presented in this figure. We can see the uh, different NLM here. So what phenomena does gravitational atom have? Uh, firstly, if we consider the isolated gravitational atom, we will find that the cl cloud, the boson cloud will extract the black hole spin. And also the boson cloud itself will emit a monochromatic gravitational wave via pair annihilation, uh, which can be detected. And also if we uh, consider a binary system, the more interesting thing will happen that the periodically potential change caused by the binary companion will trigger the resonant transition of different states of the gravitational atom. And this phenomenon is called GCP resonance transition. That is gravitational collider physics resonance transition. And this effect can be detected by multiple channel like gravitational wave or pulsar timing array. Um, these fields are well studied, but all this phenomenon requires the cloud is stable enough and long lived. But actually, uh, there is some possible that the super radiance can be terminated in a very early age or uh, a very early stage, or it can be, uh, or, uh, or even the super radiance state can be absorbed by the uh, black hole if we introduce a binary companion inside. So we can see the Hamiltonian of the gravitational atom. If there is no perturbation uh, of binary companion comes in, it should be diagonal and this is energy eigenstate. But if we introduce the perturbation from the binary companion, uh, the off diagonal term will exist. It means that um, there will be many, uh, there will be overlap of different states. Now consider a situation that there is a, a super radiant state like three to two. If it is overlapped to a absorption state like three zero zero, then it will be generated. Uh, the cloud will be generated as three to two. And because of the tidal effect of the binary companion, it quickly turns into um, maybe not quickly, but it turns into overlap to three zero state, and then it will absorb by the curved black hole. 
So it effectively effectively changed the superradiance rate of the 322 state. To study this effectively, effectively change, we diagonal the new Hamiltonian here, and we will find the effective uh, imaginary part, uh, gamma one tilt equals to gamma one at a correction. And here, the correction is the sum of all the possible overlapping state, uh, which is decided by the selection rules. So we can see that the correction is uh, related to the R star, which is the binary separation between the binary companion. So we plot a figure of the uh, uh, effective uh, superradiance rate and the binary separation for different kind of states. And here the uh, here the solid line is for the maximal uh, black hole spin, like the dimensional black hole spin equals to one. And the dashed line means the black hole spin at the saturation of previous state. So the spin is uh, less than one. And we can see from this graph, uh, for R star is big enough, uh, all the gamma tilt will tend to the dead Wheeler result, which is the uh, the gamma, the superradiance rate without considering a binary companion. This is reasonable because when the separation is big enough, then the effect of the binary companion is negligible. But if, uh, but in, in another way, if we consider a smaller R star, we can see the effective superradiance rate will drop to zero quickly. It means that the superradiance can be terminated uh, uh, totally. So to study this effect, we, uh, we define a critical distance, which means that at the critical distance, uh, the state NLM has the effective superradiance rate zero, that is, when the R star, when the separation between the companion is below the below the critical distance, then the superradiance will be terminated completely. And here we plot the uh, critical distance of different state uh, in the different par parameter space. So here alpha is the gravitational fine structure constant. Uh, we defined uh, be before, which is GMB mu. And Q is the ratio of the uh, mass of the binary companion and the black hole. So in this graph, we can see that for smaller alpha, uh, that is a uh, smaller mass of the boson, or bigger Q, uh, that is the uh, bigger uh, ratio of the binary companion and the black hole we will have bigger critical distance, which means the system will be uh, more unstable uh, because it is more uh, possible for us to uh, get into the critical distance. So what will happen if we uh, consider this uh, termination effect or absorption effect? Uh, the first consequence of the superradiance termination is that it will affect the orbital motion of the binary system. Um, because when the absorption or overlap happen, the cloud, uh, the gravitational atom will change its angular momentum or lose energy or gain energy and there will be energy exchange between the gravitational atom and the binary companion so that it will influence the binary companion's uh, orbital motion. We call this effect a back reaction. And this effect can be observed in multiple channels like gravitational wave detecting, or we want to introduce a uh, pulse timing here. So in 1975, House Taylor uh, has uh, uh, analog uh, has uh, used a way to detect the black hole uh, pulsar black hole binary. It, 
uh, orbital motion by defining a periastron time shift here. So they observed the periastron time shift change for years. And so that they use this way to um, calculate the, peer, uh, the period change of this, of, uh, of this binary system. So this is the periastron time shift for the general relativity result, which means the energy of the binary system only lose by uh, emission of gravitational wave. But in this case, if we consider the back reaction induced by the gravitational atom, we will have an extra periastron time shift here. And here SC0 is the cloud angular momentum and C1 is the occupation of the state. Um, if the difference between this extra, uh, extra back reaction periastron time shift and the GR result is bigger than the limitation of the observation, then we can see this effect. So we use this to calculate, uh, to plot out the parameter region of, we can successfully see this. Uh, effect uh, for different alpha and M. M here is the black hole mass. And for different observation time within one month to one century. And here we suppose the initial uh, occupation is 10 to the minus two. And we will have this, this parameter region. And if we consider a more dilute cases like 10 to the minus six, then we cannot see it in within one month and one year anymore. So the parameter region will shrink if we have small dilute uh, cloud. Another consequence of superradiance termination is that it has an impact on the gravitational collider physics resonance. So let me review this again. Gravitational collider physics resonance means after we introduce a binary companion, if the orbital frequency match the energy difference of different states of gravitational atom, then there will be a quickly uh, state transition between the two states. And it will also give a back reaction to the binary companion. Uh, which change the orbital motion of the binary companion. And it can also detect it by gravitational wave detecting or also uh, detected by the pulsar timing array. But in our case, we need that when the GCP transition happen, the separation of the binary companion should be bigger than the critical distance. All the cloud will be absorbed and there will be no resonance anymore. So in this case, we're putting the, this constraint into uh, the GCP transition and we find out some safe region for different kinds of transition, like hyperfine, fine, and the Bohr transition. We can see from this graph that the Bohr transition is influenced most because the energy difference for Bohr splitting is bigger. So it needs uh, more uh, large, larger frequency to uh, get into the resonance. This means the separation between the binary companions should be smaller, relatively small. So it is more possible for this binary separation smaller than the critical distance. So we will have um, uh, more bound on the Bohr transition. And uh, similarly, because uh, separation, uh, because the energy difference of hyperfine transition is small enough, so it is not influenced uh, like this way. And the final consequence of superradiance termination is that it can relax in the boson mass bound. Because uh, nowadays we use many ways to detect the boson mass, like uh, LIGO searched the continuous gravitational wave from the Milky Way center. And because the bosom mass cloud, uh, the bosom cloud will emit gravitational wave by pair annihilation. So they give a bound of that. And also uh, they 
they can use the uh, they can detect the uh, black hole spin to de detect the boson mass because the boson cloud will extract the black hole spin and they can measure it in a statistical way. And also there are many other bonds, but all of these bonds assume a uh, presence of cloud. So if the super radiance can be terminated in a very early stage or even the super radiant state, highly super radiant state can be absorbed by the curved black hole and there is no existence of the cloud, then this kind of mass bound will be relaxing. Okay, so let's come to the conclusion. So in this talk, we, uh, we state that the super radiant state uh, can couple to many dangerous absorptive state, make the super radiance being uh, terminated or making the cloud being absorbed. And we define the critical distance and we calculate the effective super radiance rate. And also we discuss the termination of super radiance can cause following effects. Firstly, we can absorb, uh, observe the cloud absorption via multiple messengers like gravitational wave detection or pulsar timing array. Or, and also it poses the tight constraint on the possible gravitational collider physics transition because of the uh, safe region, uh, the critical distance effect. And also, this effect can relax the constraints on the ultralight boson mass. And in the future, we can consider more general orbits because in this work, we only consider coplanar big uh, circle orbits. And also we can study in detail how this effect will affect the boson mass bound. Okay, this is all my presentation. Thank you for listening. Is there any question? Thank you very much. So, questions? If anyone has, has an, can I ask one question? Yes, sure. So, I a little confusing uh, for the state. So, they are, they are labeled by L, M, N. So, it's yes. almost like a sh uh, the, the hydrogen atom you said. So, did you yes. uh, really quantize uh, the particles, or, or so this is simply labeled by some some spherical harmonics of the waves? Yeah, it's simply labeled by it's just an analogy of the hydrogen atom. Well, you never quantize it, just just yeah. uh, just uh, state by the label by the sub orbits or yeah. Wave. I see. So. Um, so we, you, but you only consider some kind of circular motion, not the generic uh, motion around. Yeah, we only consider the circular motion. Yeah, but, but in that case, maybe uh, you don't have any, some three different uh, numbers like that. If you have uh, some circular motion, then you have uh, only one or two, one number. Uh, sorry, what number? So, so in, in, in a shredding, in a, in a, in a hydrogen atom. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, three different quantum numbers because they just consider the most generic kind of the motion around the around the atom. Mm -hmm. So you have a three different numbers, L and N, right? Yeah. But uh, you you consider only some, some kind of circular circular motions, right? Yeah. In that case, you still have three three numbers, L and N. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't I don't get it actually. How, how uh, the L and N comes? I, I mean, the circular motion is for the binary companion. I mean, the binary is a circular orbit yeah. with the black hole, but not for the boson. I mean, boson clouds. Oh, can I see, I see, be, I see. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. for the binary. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boson has a kind of arbitrary motion around. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Uh, sorry, uh, another question from Rongan. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Sorry. Yeah, you, you have a question, Rongan, right? No, no, I have no, no question. question. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Mm. Yeah, we still have four minutes. <laughs> Any no. other questions? Okay, can I ask one more thing? Yeah. So, so you still have some kind of concept like a bore radius in this case? 
do you mean the cloud radius? Yeah, cloud, uh, the, or some, yeah, some, yeah, yeah, for some yeah, radial yeah. limit uh, inside that we almost have that bosons, but outside there's no bosons. Yeah, 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 radius. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. be determined by what? Uh, uh, I think it can be, wait, let me check. Um, oh, uh, uh, it's just, I think it can, uh, it can be determined by both of us and black of us. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. the just, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, so. Professor Duta, Juta Kun. Yeah, yeah, Jutta, Jutta. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, this has been a very interesting talk, I must say. It's, it's very amazing um, uh, that you get rid of uh, some of these uh, clouds uh, in some ways. And I was wondering, do you also, um, I mean, do you just consider scalar clouds or do you also consider uh, vector bosons or? Oh, in this case, we only consider scalar boson because in this work. Uh, and there are these, these interesting calculations of boson stars, and uh, there is this distinction between the, the scalar type uh, of boson stars and then curved black holes uh, with the uh, scalar hair, uh, with the, the uh, Curved black holes with polka hair with the vectors seem to be uh, more stable. So in that case, it would also be very interesting to know about the vectors. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can study it after this. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, one more kick. We have two minutes. Otherwise, uh, thanks speaker again for the nice talk. Thank you, Thank you very much.